sa mga propagandang ginamit para ipatumba ang Iglesia Filipina ng Bituin Gente. Totoo nga ba? Nagtagumpay nga ba sila? Halina't ating tuklasin ang mga pangyayari, paniniwalat at ikain na siyang bumuo sa isang simbahang malaya. Beginning with the premise that the IFI is a revolutionary church, we should situate ourselves in the 1986 revolution. This revolution was a response to the social, political, and socio-economic dilemma engendered by the existing colonial and feudal system of Spanish colonizers. So this revolution became the story of our people's struggle for nationhood at which a movement of a national church was part and parcel of the larger resistance, advocating for the establishment of a Filipino church. And so, after a long period of struggle, Sunday, August 3, 1902, in a meeting of the General Council of Union Obrera Democratica, under the leadership of Don Isabelo de los Reyes Sr., commonly called as Don Bello, the Iglesia Filipina Independiente was proclaimed. The IFI, according to Monsignor Gregorio Labayan Aglipay, was founded by the Filipino people as the product of their desire for liberty, religiously, politically, and socially. As Jesus teaches about the vine and the branches, let us try to see what kind of challenge that it brings as we celebrate our proclamation anniversary. In the Gospel of John, Jesus teaches about the vine and the branches. Of course, Christ is the vine. And the branches are those who claim to be followers of Christ, where Jesus made a distinction between them, the fruitful and unfruitful. In verse 5 of our gospel, Jesus emphasizes, those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. Meaning to say that fruitful branches are true believers who by their living union with Christ strongly believes and uphold that Jesus is the Son of God and the ultimate Savior. But branches that don't bear fruit are cut off at the trunk, meaning to say, those who become unproductive, those who turn back from following Christ, will be separated from the vine, will be separated from God. How then can we say, that the church in all her splendor remained in the teachings of Jesus. First, she is a true disciple of Christ. Jesus said in verse 8, If you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. To produce much fruit is the very content of the famous statement of our Obispo Maximum. His Eminence Gregorio Agrippine, he said, Upon your shoulder lies the mission in which shall rely the future of our church. Your failure today shall be the tragedy of the church to come. The statement reminds us of our responsibilities. As such, this vision should be taken with strong conviction commitment and involvement in producing much fruit so that we may become indeed a true disciple of Christ. Secondly, she obeys God's commandment. Jesus said in verse 9 and 10, 
remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love. Jesus' command is this, love one another as I have loved you. We believe that man's humanity is God's gift and it is our responsibility to God to preserve and uphold it. And in the minds of our founding fathers, this concern has always been their top priority. And IFI can only continue this if she remains obedient to God. Third, she faithfully witnessed for the Lord. In verse 4 of our gospel, it boldly states, Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Faithfulness is required to be connected and attached to Jesus. The IFI motto, Prodeo et Patria, for God and for country, embodies not just a theological understanding of history, but the prevalent climate of nationalism which discerns God's liberating presence and power in the Filipino people's struggle for independence, integrity, and identity. And as inspired by the message of God to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with Him, meaning we should make ourselves always available for Christ and His people. And this would remind us, money or gold, we do not have. But we only have ourselves to share. Is our commitment to faithfully serve God and His people in the struggle for freedom, justice, peace, and total human development. Through her faithfulness, she will remain forever with God. Let us always remember that the Spirit of the Lord is leading our beloved church. The church that was insulted to be the church that was died before it was born was actually the church that was born for a lifetime. Fired up by the Holy Spirit, let us journey hand in hand towards faithful service. Mabuhay ay Iglesia Filipina Independiente. Tunay, makadiyos at makapayan. Mabuhay!